So it's the 4th of April 2020. It's actually my father's 64th birthday, so I'm thinking of him. Um, the other the big news today is um, the Labour leadership election result. Now, I say big news, but it was like the third news item, and that is, of course, because these are exceptional circumstances. Usually, um, the announcement of the new leader of the opposition would be a pretty big story. It would be the headline story. Um, I mean, when we saw Jeremy Corbyn and Ed Miliband elected, it was a big sort of live event. You know, you saw a packed um, press room and so on while the results were read out. Um, obviously, because of this, the circumstances have been different. The leadership election has been rumbling on for a long time, for about three, four months. But Sir Keir Starmer is the new Labour leader, and it was a resounding victory. He got 56.2%. Uh, his nearest rival was Rebecca Long Bailey, who got 27.6, and then Lisa Nandy at 16.2%. So, uh, just a few broad thoughts on this. Um, uh, I think with any new leader, I'm always willing to give them a chance. Um, any new leader of a major party or or a new prime minister, because I feel that leaders are tested by circumstance. I feel they're tested under media scrutiny. I feel they're tested under a lot of other things. So um, I'm certainly willing to give Sir Keir a chance. I think it's very important for democracy that we do have a strong opposition to hold the government to account. Um, this Tory government under Rishi Sunak uh, in the Treasury has just given a very generous budget boost, but we can't overlook the fact that for almost 10 years, 10 years next month, they have been cutting and cutting and cutting and have caused a huge amount of hardship for a lot of people. Um, the situation in the DWP, um, for example, has been profoundly cruel. And now with more people being forced to sign on because of this, uh, if I Polly Toynbee wrote a piece, uh, I didn't get a chance to read it, but the headline was, um, now the middle class are going to see how cruel Britain's welfare system is. So um, that's why it's very important that we have a strong opposition that can hold the government to account. Uh, with COVID-19, I think Sir Keir has taken a practical approach. He said, we'll support the government where um, we're fit and we'll criticise the government where we're fit. In other words, not criticise just for the sake of it, but be practical. Um, he's a London MP and I can't remember what seat he is in. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, I had forgotten this was even today. Such was a secondary issue. Um, and uh, his deputy has been announced as Angela Rayner. So I'm broadly welcoming of the result. I am pleased that someone like Rebecca Long Bailey didn't win. That would have been a lurch to the left. It would have been Corbyn Mark II. And it would have shown that Labour hasn't learned a damn thing. Now, Sir Keir Starmer is broadly a centrist. Um, I don't think he's a Blairite. I don't think he is exactly in that mould of politics. However, he's certainly not on that radical left side that uh, Corbyn and McDonnell and so on uh, promoted. So, in other words, he's viable. Um, he will have at least four years as opposition leader. Presumably, there's not some major internal scandal. And there's no sign that there will be. So he'll have plenty of time to prove himself. He's 58, I believe. So in politics, that's sort of an average age. Um, so time will tell. Um, it's certainly a very, very demanding job. Um, what do we know about Sir Keir? Well, uh, we know that he doesn't like the knighthood title. He does have a knighthood. Um, but he doesn't like to be known as Sir Keir Starmer. He likes playing old Keir Starmer. Um, just a little bit of novelty for the history buffs out there. Labour's first leader was also known as Keir, Keir Hardy, uh, back when the Labour Party was sort of a collective um, series of different groupings rather than an organised political party. Uh, and then it formed in 1900 as, I believe, the Labour and Cooperative Party. Um, so Labour's first leader was Keir Hardy. Uh, we now have Keir Starmer. Um, we know that he was a human rights lawyer. We know that he was the director of public prosecutions. And he did make one controversial decision in that tenure, uh, which was deciding not to prosecute 
um, the police officer who uh, pushed a man, Ian Tomlinson, during the G20 protests in London back in 2009. Now, what happened was the officer pushed this man who, who then suffered a heart attack, a fatal heart attack. And that was very controversial. There was a lot of public anger over that. And as director of public prosecution, here Starmer chose not to prosecute PC. I forget the officer's name now, but that was somewhat controversial. On the other hand, he has been a human rights lawyer. Um, it would be wrong to say that he's an outsider. In many ways, he's an establishment politician. He's uh, London. He's part of that London set. But I wouldn't say as a champagne socialist, I think that would be unfair. Um, one thing I dislike about all the candidates lately, not a single one of them spoke out when Sir Trevor Phillips was expelled from Labour for no other reason than telling the truth about grooming gangs. He was expelled for supposed Islamophobia. Now, I would have liked Keir Starmer and the others to have, um, but particularly Keir Starmer as a front runner, to have spoken out and said, no, that's not what Labour's about. We have to have freedom of expression in this party to criticise religion. Um, I am That doesn't sit well with me. I will also be watching closely to see what sort of direction Starmer takes. I don't think we're going to see... One good thing about Starmer, he certainly doesn't, doesn't have the baggage of Corbyn. So there's no terrorist sympathies there. There's no controversial calling of vile organisations our friends. Um, and I think Starmer will take a much more practical, real-world approach to uh, foreign dictators, um, not pick and choose who he supports depending on ideology, as Corbyn did. Um, I also think that uh, Starmer would be more of a patriot than Corbyn was. I mean, for Corbyn to basically pull the Kremlin's narrative after the Salisbury attack was, in my view, absolutely appalling. Having said that, Corbyn didn't get everything wrong. Corbyn was right to bring awareness of um, social injustice. He was right to say we need more compassion in the welfare system and issues around that. So the things that Corbyn did get right, Starmer should continue. But uh, simply the fact that he doesn't have Corbyn's baggage is a good thing. Um, so I think there'll be less of a toxic feeling on the doorstep with many Labour voters. However, his work is cut out for him. Labour still has a long way to rebuild trust. Now, in my opinion, what Labour needs to do is focus on bread and butter issues, everyday issues, rather than this obsession it has with identity politics. Um, you know, spending so much time focusing on uh, transgender pronouns and threatening to expel Labour women who take issue with that. I think Labour is wrong to go down that really shackling sort of line. Um, people all the time say, you know, core Labour voters say, oh, it's no longer the Labour Party, they no longer represent me. So Starmer will really need to understand those sentiments. He will really need to understand that the average Labour voter doesn't care about political correctness and identity politics. That's not to say that Labour should go back to the 70s and sort of be like only pitching to the white majority. Um, certainly not. Uh, it is important that Labour recognises we're a diverse society. It is important that Labour um, takes on board minority concerns. But this obsession it's had with identity politics in recent years, and the same is true of the American Democrats, it's not a vote winner. It's really not. It may do wonders in university campuses. It may do wonders in certain little cliques in London. But to the majority of people, not only are they not interested in that, they're openly hostile to it. Why? Because they don't like the idea of thought policing. They don't like the idea that women will be punished because they insist that biology matters and so on. So I think that I, I would like to see Starmer move away from that in a big way um, and just focus on everyday sort of issues that Labour has always been strong on. I mean, Labour is a party of the NHS uh, and Labour is a great political party. Um, I don't think it's dead just yet. And hopefully Starmer will rejuvenate it. But time will tell. Um, there is another thing about Starmer and I don't like to say this because I don't think that personality politics should be the priority. But to be blunt about it, he doesn't really 
he's not the most inspiring figure out there. He's not. Um, you know, you can have the best policies in the world, but you also need to have a certain public perception. And I think the problem is many of the public wouldn't even know what he looks like. Um, he's not a very well-known figure to the public. Um, and frankly, he's a little bit dull. Um, and that's not a personal slight against a man. It's nothing to do with his integrity or anything like that. But unfortunately, it does matter. Look at the way Ed Miliband was given a hard time over his supposed um, uh, weirdness. Now, I think a lot of that was the gutter press, just being the gutter press and not being professional. But unfortunately, they do have a lot of power. Look at the way Gordon Brown got a hard time over being the dark Scotsman. Um, this is unfortunate. It shouldn't be that way. But when you consider that Johnson really does carry a lot of um, charisma, it, it wouldn't be a case of Starmer having to change his personality, but I think he needs to be a little bit more outspoken. I think he needs to make his mark a little bit more, get in the headlines a little bit more. Um, I mean, he has a huge responsibility. This is a very demanding job that he's in. Um, Cameron even acknowledged that when uh, Corbyn made his fire well in the comments. Um, uh, excuse me, not Cameron. Boris Johnson acknowledged that it is a demanding job. And it is. Uh, you know, you're holding a government to account. You're constantly under scrutiny. So leader of the opposition is a very demanding job. Time will tell. So I'm not wholeheartedly embracing Sir Keir Starmer. Time will tell. But I am broadly quite happy with this. I would like him to be a bit more outspoken. I want to see Labour shift away from identity politics. Yes, it's important that the anti-Semitism thing is robustly tackled. But I also want to see less language policing in terms of, for example, if Labour MPs raise concerns over grooming gangs, they should not be smeared as racists. That is a really, really big issue. And it's one area where I think Labour has been disastrous. They have pitched to political correctness. They have literally determined that sensitivities matter more than the safety of children. That is a disgrace. So I want to see Labour moving away from that sort of, frankly, cardly political correctness. They need to speak out on social justice issues without being afraid of offending somebody. They need to get this right. So, um, yeah, I wish Sir Keir Starmer all the best because... It's not just for his personal sake, it's for the sake of democracy. Um, so there we have it. So here's Starmer, the new leader of the Labour Party and Her Majesty's opposition.